So I have here another statement I've been asked to comment upon. Hermetic magic has little in common with the social stereotypes about magic, nor with the purpose of it. Hermetic magic has little similarities with low magic, folk magic, black magic and voodoo. Hermetic magic has an important purpose, the evolution of the human spirit. I would agree with that, but it's also important to note that hermetic magic can also be used for uh, performing black magic. But um, before we get into this topic too deeply, let us also really define what is hermetic magic. Hermetic magic is basically magic which really utilizes um, laws and structure. So it is a magic which is not merely coming out of the, the willpower, as most magic is, but it is much more also coming out of the, uh, the brain, the understanding of the cosmos. So instead of doing things more or less blindly, uh, fulfilling our desires in a, in a more or less blind fashion, hermetic magic is about fulfilling our desires in a fashion where we can predict the results, see the side effects, understand what we are doing. So you can see it a little bit more as a, as a, you could say a scientific approach to magic, uh, while the other is more of a practical approach to performing magic. Um, hermetic magic only became possible, of course, once our, the knowledge of humanity was, had increased to a great enough level that we would have the, in a way, the, the, the means, the tools, to really conceptualize um, the cosmos, the universe, um, and um, the, the role of uh, spiritual laws um, within that, and had the concept of hierarchy and interrelations between powers. So Hermeticism is ultimately the, the study of our universe, and Hermetic magic is the employment of willpower within that mindset within that framework. Uh, so it is indeed, you could say, um, combining uh, the more, uh, you could say, an evolution, I would say, of the pre-existing forms of magic by adding more knowledge to it. What I would say, what actually most hermetic magic which is performed, I would call low magic. Um, let me define here low magic and high magic. Um, for me, low magic is anything which has to do with the form part of the cosmos. So the higher parts of the cosmos, they're formless. The lower parts are the worlds of form. So as soon as something becomes um, associated with a form, like, for instance, a spirit can be a human spirit, or a cat spirit, a dog spirit, an oak spirit, then it has an association, a link with one specific form of being, and then I would consider it to be low magic. Also, any magic which manifests into a physical change, uh, for instance, uh, healing of a headache, or um, changing of a person's emotions or thoughts, Thoughts and emotions also only exist in the realm of form. That is what I would call low magic. High magic are things which act upon the realms of the soul, um, working with the greater uh, powers, the sources out of which we are uh, construed. Um, so, for instance, you could say the, the the birth of a deity, um, the shaping of human energy bodies, those could be considered forms of high magic, because ultimately the bringing together of the forces exists on a higher level, and this mix of forces ultimately turns into humanity. So not so much, you could say, 
tinkering with the form of humanity, but working with the essence of humanity, of what essential powers are manifesting through our species, or through other species for that matter. That is what I would call high magic. But even within the hermetic mag magical discipline, there's the greatest focus on uh, thaumaturgy or low magic. Low magic can also be um, construed to be non-spiritual magic, according to some people. Um, personally, I don't make a distinction in, in this fashion. Um, because I don't think it is necessarily um, better or worse to try to heal a spirit or to heal a person's body. Um, of course, healing the spirit has a longer term effect. It will uh, keep on working on that person and help them even after they died. But both of them can be an act of compassion and can be also an act of fulfilling your own spiritual mission. Um, so I wouldn't condemn low magic in such a sense. Um, folk magic um, is generally uh, protective magic. So um, often it is about rituals to appease the, the spirits in the house, the spirits in the land around the house, um, even the spirits of objects uh, can be uh, can be appeased or pleased in such a way. Um, so it is very much about showing respect, uh, but also asking for their support and uh, sometimes protection even against um, malignant uh, beings. Um, so folk magic, I wouldn't say is, is really a form of, of magic, but rather I would say a ritualized communication uh, which is happening because it is usually not through the power of will or the skill of the magic user that they are generating this effect. It is more that they are using a ritual fashion of praying, of performing rituals or actions to signify to the spirits which are yeah, um, known in their culture or accustomed to their culture what they would like, what they would want. So folk magic, I wouldn't say, is really magic magic. Uh, it can be because of course the person has a very strong desire and also through this desire and imagery the person can also manifest it directly. So folk magic can be magic but most people who perform it are merely cooperating. Black magic, um, as I said, um, it's hermetic magic can also be black magic. Um, black magic is ultimately a method of working where you're in a way cutting corners, so to say. Black magic is not necessarily evil, but you are disrespecting uh, liberties. So um, Black magic is often acting out of a, um, a situation where there is no equality between you and the object which you're working upon and there's no freedom for the object to behave in a different way. Um, so um, for instance if I would perform a healing in a, a white magic way I would offer an energy to the person and as an equal and the person could then accept the energy if they would like to and they are able to do with the energy as they please. If I would offer a healing in a black magic way I would basically um, force the energy or find a way for the energy to go in without the other person having an opportunity not to accept my energy and I would dictate the effect of that energy. Um, so black magic, especially in healing, can be very useful. If a person is having some form of self-sabotage, they're keeping themselves sick or in a negative cycle, um, then 
often by an act of black magic you can force them out of the cycle. But black magic is in a way very dangerous because you are putting yourself in a situation where you're um, in a way taking control over other beings. And of course humans practice loads and loads and loads of black magic anyway. We just don't call it magic, we call it, for instance, uh, mining or agriculture or uh, animal husbandry or uh, having pets. But these are essentially the same. We're also not acting out of inequality with the earth, with the plants, with the animals. Um, we are forcing a very specific effect which we desire um, and we force them to deliver that effect. So the world is rife with black magic. And ultimately it doesn't matter whether we do it in uh, socially accepted, uh, financially rewarded, um, economical business uh, manner or if we do it in a spiritual manner. The end result is the same. It is not very good for our karma. But, well, there you have it. People think that if it is done in a magical way, then, ooh, you will be punished. But if we do it in a normal way, when we go gardening or eating meat or uh, whatnot, that it's all right. But no, it isn't. <laughs> Karmatically, there is really no difference. And this is why, karmatically, humanity is not doing very well. And the position of the human race is being, well, very much abused by the spirits who incarnate as members of that race. So, then we come to voodoo. Well, yeah, voodoo uh, uses actually some of the... the actually quite a few of the hermetic laws, I would say. Um, so I wouldn't say there is such a big difference between uh, voodoo and hermetic magic at all. Um, one of the differences is that in voodoo there is a lot of cooperation with other greater spirits, while most hermetic magicians prefer to act alone. In voodoo there is a great understanding of the cause and effect relation and um, of the importance of not disturbing the, the natural balance um, of the effects of karma. So I would say actually that voodoo is a very mature magical system, much more mature than the typical low magic or folk magic. And um, for voodoo practitioners, just as for practitioners of black magic, it's very important to understand these laws because performing voodoo or performing black magic can have a lot of nasty side effects either in this life or in future incarnations and the advent of the, the hermetic consciousness has actually given a lot of benefits to the practitioners of black magic and also to the practitioners of voodoo by understanding the effects of their actions over many incarnations, both on themselves and on others, um, they're in a way able to, um, you could say, find the holes in the laws. So for instance, if I um, would be a black magician, somebody would pay me to make another person ill um, or better ultimately it doesn't matter, it's just a shift, then I would be upsetting the balance because maybe that person is supposed to learn a lesson or there is supposed to be a certain amount of sickness or illness within the world. And by using my power to change that, I'm ultimately acting against the cosmos in itself, the universe in itself, by trying to remove sickness, disease, war or similar things and that would basically be banishing um, a lot of powers which are now manifesting out of the world of manifestation into higher realms. 
and ultimately we would be denying a higher power its manifestation and we would be denying our own possibility of trying to learn and experience these exper the manifestations of this power. So the final result would be, if I would continue doing these things, that I would be stopped. Um, either if I'm very powerful I would succeed, I would banish this power from manifesting, thereby diminishing the variety in the uh, form uh, universe, or more likely I would be stopped from doing that uh, and interrupting with the growth and development of all my fellow spirits by simple, simply removing my ability to perform such disturbing acts. So by most typically taking away my power or blocking me in some other fashion. So for the hermetic mage or for the Voodoo practitioner, or they have an understanding of these things. So for instance, if I would heal one person, well, I can't let the disease disappear because that would upset the balance. So I take the disease away from one person, I take money for that, I have this clump of negative horrible energy and somebody else pays me to do something to the person they're envious of or angry at. So okay, I will just move this energy from this person to that person and I get paid both ways. One for taking away the energy and the other for inflicting that energy upon somebody else. And that somebody else can also be, for instance, a chicken or a pig, as we can see in the Bible, for instance. So when Jesus cast out the demons and put them in the pigs, also an act of hermetic magic. What um, we do by using the hermetic tradition is we understand the laws and act in such a way that the laws um, are not broken and we get the effects we want. Ultimately there is not so much a morality to the hermetic magic because unfortunately hermetic magic as far as I've seen is used equally for yeah, lighter and for darker purposes because hermetic magic is very very suitable for use in black magic rituals uh, because the essence of hermetic magic using laws which are in a way immutable and will have a very definite effect um, can very easily block out a person's ability to refuse the energy or to change what effect it should have upon them. So hermetic magic is more powerful um, than the older forms of magic but also has a much bigger tendency to go towards the dark side because inequality and lack of liberty um, are much easier with hermetic magic than with non-hermetic magic. Non-hermetic magic is in a way more based upon um, a sense of communion being one with the person you're performing the magic upon, while in a way the laws, the symbolism, the, um, allow us to work with the symbol rather than with the other person's spirit directly. So there's often less cooperation in hermetic magic than there is in the more ancient forms of magic. So is it an advancement? Yes, it is more complex. Uh, but there's also a very big danger if we forget that we should cooperate and be one and meditate with whatever object we are trying to, to manifest or we're trying to manipulate in a magical, magical fashion. So hermeticism can add but it can also detract from our magical practice if we forget our earlier lessons about how to practice magic in a more social, communal fashion.